So in a surprise to no one, we're going to be starting with the insanity that was the Warriors-Celtics game. Steph, I, I they said he hit an impossible shot. I didn't know which one it was. It was was it going to be this one or was it one the one that he hit like in the fourth quarter? A uh, potentially game of the season so far. I'm going to be honest. I don't even know what the other candidates would be. I feel like the injuries have been so rough this year that it's like kind of tough to really find one game. Um, and it has to be a national game, of course, because everybody's got to be watching. And you know, it could have been this one. And even this game had injuries. You know, Jalen was out. Rachel Nichols is an awful reporter. Okay, let's see. Tatum had a great game. First two questions were about Steph. Could you congratulate the man on a great game first? Maybe I just don't care about media people as much, but like I don't have a strong take on Rachel Nichols any which way. I think she's okay. Draymond on Tatum's big night. Incredible. He stepped up and put them on his back. My sub is still better though. So I read this like last night and it took me a year to be like, what the hell is he talking about? It's the Subway commercial. It's 2021. How are we still having commercials hold up games? Why is there not a streaming service for the NBA to where NBA games are only like an hour and 20 minutes long? And it's all subscription-based, so that's how they make their money. How is this not a thing? Oh, we got to see the Toscano Anderson save. This was nuts. This was crazy. So we get the miss three, and then just, my goodness. <laughs> you talk about doing everything you can to earn a contract. And then, of course, Steph hits the three right after. That was, that was nuts. And Tony Snell, 16 games left. 50-50-90, and may even be 50-50-100. Okay. How do you get to 100? Oh, 11 for 11 from the line. That's how you do it. Yeah, man. Efficient 3 and D guys. They matter. They certainly matter. Here we go. More Steph stuff. This is what I live for, especially because the Celtics won the game, so I can live with all this. Good defense by Grant Williams, and it just does not matter at all. How is Steph Curry real? What is this? Like, how do you... You just don't. You just... Yeah. It's nuts. It's absolutely nuts. What a game. 47, 7, and 3, 15 for 27. It should be said, Jason Tatum went off too, but, you know, Steph was, of course, the uh, the best player in the game. This is what he has to do for the Warriors to be competitive. Westbrook, first player in NBA history to have 25-plus triple-doubles in four different seasons. Yeah, the Wizards are coming alive a little bit. We'll see if by the end of the season they get into the play-in or whatever it is. 39 points, 6 rebounds, 5 assists, 55, 49, 90. 74 true shooting. League average true shooting is like 55. With this recent stretch, maybe he has been the best player in the NBA this season. I mean, look, Jokic or Embiid is going to go on another crazy stretch, I know, but... Could be Steph, you know, at a stretch of the year, it was also like, has Harden been the best guy in the league? And maybe it's Steph now. Westbrook dunks the lob from Denny. You mean they actually let Denny make a play? Look at this. Look at what Denny can do when you actually give him the ball. It's a crazy concept. The guy who was known as a really good passer coming into the NBA makes a really good pass. Someone in the comments agree with me, please. That pass was pretty amazing, too. I, I, I should probably give Westbrook credit. It was a very nice play. I just, I'm so pent up with, please let Denny be Denny. Here we go, Tatum. 44, 10, 3, 2, 16 for 25, 5 for 9 from 3. Eight free throws. That was, uh, that, that's, that's big. Of course, it was not all, I mean, it was still mainly not free throws, but yeah, man, the fallaways and the pick and roll to, like, do some crafty floater layup thing that Tatum does. Hopefully I'm watching him uh, play basketball in the Celtics jersey uh, until I'm, I don't know, 42 or something. Indiana University offered seven years, 70 million to Brad Stevens, but he declined. Good. That's a lot of money, though. I feel like a college coaching gig is better than an NBA one because... For one, it's like a bunch of 19-year-olds who will actually listen to you. And you're thought of as, like, the main guy. Whereas in the NBA, it's like, eh, hey, you're probably going to get canned, let's just be honest. The math suggests if you are hired as an NBA coach, you will be fired. 
Whereas in college, you can be like Roy Williams and be the coach for 20-something years and eventually just bow out yourself. Here was the other one. This one was nuts. He had two guys on him in the corner. I guess it's just one guy. Marcus didn't commit all the way. Steph and Aisha Curry. Oakland to kids, 16 million meals in one year. It's good stuff. The Lakers defeat the Jazz in overtime. Yeah, the Lakers without AD and LeBron. Pretty respectable. Utah's going to have to go without Don Mitch for a little bit here. Which, I imagine they'll be fine. I mean, the Jazz defense should hold up really well. And they still have enough scorers to make up for some of what Mitchell gives them. Not all of it, of course. Was this Warriors-Celtics game the best game of the season? It could have. Somebody else tell me what, what the game would have been, because I really can't think of one. Wizards-Nets 2? No, I didn't see it. Cavs-Nets 1, alright, that one okay, but I didn't get to see that game. I don't remember why. I think the Celtics were on. And that was during, like, oh my god, what's wrong with the Celtics? Warriors-Celtics games for the past six years have been so fun. Although the Warriors usually lose. Yeah, they always play the Warriors well. Granted, these are not the same Warriors, but you get it. And has an argument, and then a bunch of things. Well, what's the other game, then? Is it, is it, is it Nets-Cavs? I guess it could be. Draymond misses a crucial layup. Yeah, this was about with a minute to go, and I think he took Smart off the dribble. And the moment he did that, I got so happy because I'm like, yes, Steph Curry's not going to shoot on this play. Can I just say, the very last shot that Steph attempted while I thought it was going in, was maybe like 2% uh, a little too daring for Steph when he took it from like right here, pretty much. It was before they brought the double team on him. Ilyasova with a huge rejection of Kuzma at the rim. Ursan Ilyasova, staying alive in the NBA. Didn't know he could still get up that much. No structural damage for Mitchell. Yeah, that was, that was pretty scary for a moment. The injuries have been a... The thing this year, man. I mean, I guess there was the thing about how, like, technically injuries are in line with what they usually are. But this year, it, it seems like it's for all the really good players. I mean, has there been a single good team that hasn't been affected by injuries like that? Like, I, I guess Phoenix would be the one team. Like, everybody else has had to deal with it. Uh, maybe the Bucks. Although, no, the Bucks they didn't have Drew Holiday for a stretch. Van Fleet, this is probably the most unpure year of basketball I've ever been part of. From the whole league and rushing the season back, yeah, they should not be playing 72 games. This should be, a, I don't know, a 64-game season at the most or something. You know, having the All-Star game, which they were lucky. It didn't end up being that bad, but it was still a risk nonetheless, right? And of course, the entire time they've been in Tampa, so... For this one season, I kind of don't blame anyone on the Raptors for what's going on. I mean, you got to adjust your whole life from going from Canada to Florida and all that. Now, he does point out that the players did pick this option. I don't remember the details of it all, but I don't know. Is this the best way it could have gone? Well, who knows? Grayson Allen, 26-4-1, 9 for 13, 7 from 10 from deep. Yeah, he's a good player. He's a good role player who honestly like could grow into being like a really nice like 15 16 points a game guy and i will say this mainly just to cause chaos among grizzlies fans are we sure he's not better than dylan brooks because dylan brooks is very up and down and he plays tough and he definitely brings a bit of culture to the grizzlies but he takes some bad shots whereas grayson allen just kind of plays within the flow of the team to be fair, they're still both in the same team, so it's not like it's that big of an issue. Daniel Gafford's improvement since being traded to the Wizards. Seven games, 11 points, six boards, two blocks, 64 shooting. I am not going to pretend to have known this one at all. I'm sure only Wizards fans have a real take on this one. Yeah, what's going on, man? Luke Cornett's on the Celtics. Suddenly he's like a 3 and D center. I don't truly believe that, but it has been that a little bit. Daniel Gafford's been better. Wendell has been going off a bit for the Magic. Is it just getting out of Chicago that does it for guys? Kemba step back three, puts the Celtics up five. This one had some, some, some extra stuff behind it, if you ask me. A bit of like getting the frustrations out for the season from Kemba. 
I was nervous with this play because they just couldn't get it to Tatum. And right when I realized that Kemba was going to go up, I just, I hoped for the best. I really did. And I almost made an all caps Kemba tweet, but I kind of have a rule where I'm like, I don't want to have the like go crazy tweet until the game is over. Because you never know what could happen. Beal 37, Steph 47 competing for the scoring title. Steph is averaging 31.04, Beal 31.1. Steph should be shooting like 25 times a game. Potentially more. He should be shooting 23s a game. Why not? If he shoots 47 or whatever he shoots percent on 11 threes a game, why stop at 11 threes a game? And Tatum beats the buzzer. Yeah, so at the end of the first half, it was looking really bad for the Celtics, but then they had a couple buckets that I don't remember how they got. And then Bazemore had a like an offensive foul and then a technical, and it led to an 8-0 run, and this was the, the last play from it where they they could have easily been down like 13 or 14 points going into the half, and then after this they were down six. And I think it was pretty crucial. More Ilyasova. The guy's blocking Kuzma dunks, and then he's just bombing threes the way only Ilyasova knows how to do, which is just stand there and wait for the ball to come his way. (laughs) Let's see if he moves at all in any of these. Any sort of off-ball action, any sort of... uh, Anything. Well, he sets a little bit of a screen. He almost falls over. Simple catch. Oh, a little, little bit off the dribble. Step back. Okay. Maybe I don't give Ilyasova enough credit. A pick and pop where there was no initial screen. That's This is the typical Ilyasova thing. Any sort of Doug McDermott-esque starting from the corner and then flying around thing? No. Although that was a pretty tough shot. Marcus, this was a huge play. He gets the offensive rebound. Where's Marcus? He's right here. And gets the offensive board in true Marcus Smart fashion, and then he takes and then he takes like a year to finally shoot the three. He just passes out with Bazemore. He's like, eh, just eventually gonna shoot this, and there you go. It's huge. Huge play. And Steph has more three pointers made than all but eleven players have achieved in any single season. He's played forty nine games. Yeah, man, he's just, uh, he's changed, he's changed basketball, that's how it is. Jabari, first game as a Celtic, 11 points, 4 boards, 5 for 6. The one play that I remember is when he got like an offensive rebound or something and he hit a mid-range jumper, and I just had this moment of like, oh my god, they have someone on the bench, well, besides Fournier, but Fournier is out at the moment, who can do more than just make a spot-up 3, or shoot a spot-up 3, because they don't always make them, right? Now, as I say that, Jabari's three-point shooting is a little bit of a question, but he just gives them some more dynamic stuff. And if they've got him and Evan Fournier to go to off the bench with Time Lord coming back and Tatum and Jalen Rowland and Kemba maybe being a little better, I don't want to go too nuts, okay? I don't. But I'm not going to say nothing. I don't want to go too far. 